my darlings. Thank you so much for stopping by and being a part of our kitchen experience today. So, what are we going to do today? Today is Sunday. Sunday, we usually have, of course, the big Sunday dinner. Invite a few people over. We have our chicken or roast beef, pot roast and mashed potatoes and all that stuff. Cornbread, macaroni and cheese. Ooh, making myself hungry. <laughs> but today we're going to do something a little different. It's just me and the hubby at home. So, what are we going to do? We're going to have some fun and do some burgers. But, yes, Mama Kim, anybody can do burgers. But not just any kind of burgers. You know I always got to do something different. So today we're going to do lamb burgers and salmon burgers. Why lamb burgers? Well, lamb burgers cost a little bit more than the ground beef and the ground turkey, yes. Not too much more, but a little bit more. But lamb is very lean, it's very healthy, it's high in protein, very low in fat, and it's really, really good, especially if you flavor it, the, if you season it, I'm sorry, the right way. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed if you try it. Now, for those salmon burgers, those are for me. So, we're going to learn how to make some salmon burgers straight from scratch from a filet of salmon that we picked up from the fish market right there at the store. And I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. It's going to be good. It is something you can do extremely quick. You do it very, very quickly and you're going to be in heaven. I promise. So, and, and, oh, I almost forgot, we're going to make some homemade onion rings to go with that. And we just may make us a nice pot of fresh hibiscus tea. Not hibiscus tea from the tea bag that you buy at the store, not Lipton's. This is hibiscus tea made from scratch yourself that is very quick and extremely easy. So, let's get started on our Sunday dinner and see what happens. Alrighty, my lovelies. So we're going to start with our salmon burgers and just getting those ready. So first you're going to start by taking the skin off the back of your salmon fillets. And I know you can't see it in my shot, but I have a bowl for the skin because you don't want to really put that in the skin with your vegetable scraps if you can plant it. And they use them for, um, you don't want to put it in the same bowl as your vegetable scraps if you're planning to use them for stock. So we're just going to take that skin off the back of the salmon. Okay, and it'll be ready for us to do what we need to do here in just a second. And if the salmon is right, it, it's, it's very easy to come off. And so, now, you might also find that some salmon, like the wild caught salmon, might have a little gristle in it. You just pull them out. It's not hard and it's not going to be very many in there. You still want, I like the, some of the gristle sometimes. It's not a bone, it's a gristle. <laughs> So you just pull them out if you don't want them in there, if you're a little leery about it. So we're going to pull those out. Now as you pull the skin off, the salmon itself flakes. That's what you want it to do. Okay, You want the salmon to flake. And so, so that when you start to form your salmon patties for your burgers, that it's already flaked up. Okay. Now, in between getting the salmon burgers ready and getting your other burgers ready, your lamb burgers, you're going to make sure that you wash your board off with soap and water so that you don't cross contaminate your, your meat with your fish and make sure you wash your hands in between handling the meat. Okay, again, soap and water, but of course you already know that. Don't have to tell you. <laughs> so, now, so we have our salmon already peeled off the back of the skin, and you see how it just flaked right on up, which is perfect. So now that it's flaked all up, what we're going to do is put that back into the bowl that we had it sitting in. So we're going to put that in the bowl that we had it sitting in. And if you give me one second, I'm going to wash my hands with a little soap and water and wash off this board right quick, and then we're going to get this salmon ready. All right, so you see I've already washed off my board so I can have a clean space to work with. And I'm drying my hands here. You see I always keep a towel most of the time over my uh, shoulder. Anyway, so we're going to get our salmon burgers ready. Now, you are going to need a few herbs for your salmon because you want to give it that extra pop of flavor. I have chosen to use some dill, of course, which is one of my favorite herbs, and some rosemary. 
Now, rather than try to cut it all up in there, I'm just going to break it off in here because I don't have to like chop or cut. And remember we said once before that with dill, especially like when you cut the dill leaves off, they're already kind of separated out. So they separate when you cut them. So there's no need to really do all the fine chop unless that's just really what you want to do. So you can use a pair of kitchen scissors to cut those up. Okay. Now we've put some dill weed in. Usually used to be about two tablespoons once you finish breaking them up and doing what you need to do. Okay, then we're going to take your rosemary. Now your rosemary is a little different because rosemary, uh, the leaves can be a little hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leaves off the stem. I'm going to take two stalks and just pull the leaves off the stem. And they have these wonderful little gadgets that help you to pull the leaves off. I just would rather just pull them off myself as opposed to running them through that little gadget, the little destemming gadget, but that's just my personal preference. So, you're going to take those rosemary stems. Now, to make it really easy, what we can do, we're going to set, pull them over to the side. To make it really easy, instead of you trying to chop, 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 Take your kitchen scissors, make sure they're clean, and cut. See how easy and quick that goes? I'm all about making stuff. I love to cook, but I like to make things a little easier in the kitchen if I can. So you just take your kitchen scissors and cut the leaves up so that you still get what you need and have them all chopped up. You don't have these great big huge pieces in it. All right, now in this bowl, we're gonna take some of the chopped bell peppers that we had chopped up and you notice that we chopped quite a bit and that's because we're doing two separate burgers so I chopped enough for both so we're gonna take some I'm just gonna take about half and put that in there and I still have some for the other okay I'm gonna put that in there we're gonna put in our dried onions our lemon pepper seasoning that we have uh, I make my own, but you don't have to. You can buy it. It's okay. A little sea salt. Notice I'm using regular sea salt this time and not the black or the smoked and because I'm a weirdo. I use all kind of stuff. And then I'm going to do something real crazy. have a little salsa that I made myself from when I did the seafood rotel slash nacho video. And you can go check that out. It should be already uploaded. And I'm going to use a little bit of that in here as well. Just give it a little extra kick. Okay, so I'm going to take that and mix it around. Okay, get all those flavors incorporated in. Now, what you was probably wondering what I was going to do with the goat cheese. Well, I keep a little goat cheese in my, fr in my refrigerator because I like it in mixed in sauces and things like that. So... I had a little that still needed to be used that I hadn't used up. So I'm going to take it and put it in with my salmon. It's going to make give it a little creamy taste and it's going to be good. You don't have to do that, but that's just me and it's something I like to do. So, and there we go. I'm going to get that all mixed in together. Now, we're going to take some... You know, sometimes when you're using, you know, meat, like uh, ground beef, ground turkey, or whatever, if you're making meatloaf or something, you put an egg in because it's used as a binding agent for when you put in like some breadcrumbs or something to try to hold it together. Here's the thing with salmon. It's already mushy. <laughs> it's already extremely wet. So you don't really have to have an egg to put in it if you don't want to when you're making Oh my gosh, I'm making a mess. If, if you don't want to use it with um if you don't want to put an egg in you really don't have to you can still but you don't really have to so the next phase is to put in some breadcrumbs about a half a cup or so should do and then we're gonna get them ready okay so we've put in our breadcrumbs and then what we're gonna do is we're going to put uh form these into patties and put them on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper 
and then we're going to let them sit in the freezer for just about 10 or 15 minutes so that they don't come apart while we're getting everything else ready. Okay, so we're going to make our patties and put them on the parchment and then we're going to come back and start on the lamb burgers. Okay, so now we're starting on our lamb burgers. I've already put in our um, dried onions, some sea salt, pepper, a little oregano, uh, the chopped bell peppers, both kinds. And then I've also chopped up some rosemary and put it in there. And then I put in one egg. Okay, so you're going to take that and mash that around in there. And you can season it however you want, but the trick to lamb is it has to be seasoned really well and you don't need a lot of salt. That's the beautiful thing about lamb is you don't need very much salt at all, but everything else you do. Just make sure you layer those. Now we're going to take our breadcrumbs, and again about a half a cup, this is only a pound of meat, so about a half a cup should do it. And we're going to mix that in that way. Now I'm going to grab, oh I have one right here, I was going to say I'm going to grab a plate and we're going to form our patties. Now if you bear with me just a minute, let me grab this plate. And I'm going to put that together for you. Okay, so it was the same plate I had the herbs on, so sorry about that. <laughs> but now, now. So when you're making your patties, you want to start in a ball. And actually, let me show you this first. So we're going to take this out, and you should have one great big bowl of meat. You see that? This should actually make you about four really nice sized burgers. You can use a knife and cut it, but I score it with my hand. That way I know exactly what I'm getting. And I don't have to go running around looking for a knife and then getting meat parts all over the knife. So, <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put that in there, the two other balls into the bowl, and uh, just make little partial balls. Doesn't have to be anything perfect into the bowl. Okay, now you're going to form your burger, but what we're going to do is something a little different and quick, and you see. It gets messy when you're making burgers, but that's okay. You can always, you can wash your hands. You need to wash your hands, so it's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this um, cubed mozzarella that we had, and we're going to put that inside of the meat. Then you're going to form your burger ball around the cheese. That way you cook it, and the cheese is already inside. You don't really have to put cheese on top if you don't want to. Then we're going to make our little patty. It's going to be nice and lovely. Make sure that you completely cover the cheese. You build your little cave, a little protection area. And then you're going to make your patty. There you go. And we're going to do this a couple more times with the rest. I'm going to put the cheese in the middle. So we're going to make that little ball. And then we're going to flatten it out. And the meat actually protects the cheese. And the way you're going to keep the cheese from coming out of here and, and oozing out when you're cooking it is you don't have to cook them on the grill. You can, but you don't have to. You're actually going to, we're gonna cook these in the oven. I've already put the oven on 350 degrees and the lamb doesn't take very long to cook. So we're, we're gonna put these in the oven on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, just like on the salmon, but different sheet. And we're gonna put these in the oven and cook them at 350 degrees for about 15, to 20 minutes maybe just got to keep checking depending on how you like them if you like them well done you're going to cook them about 15 to 20 minutes if you like them medium rare you're going to cook them about 10 to, 10 to 12 minutes okay then with the salmon you're going to cook it at the same degrees and I just happen to have a double oven so because I have a double oven I can cook it in two separate areas but if you don't have a double oven make sure that you cover your salmon burger if you're going to cook them in the same oven because if you cook them in the same oven you don't want that fish smell and fishy taste to get into your other burgers so make sure you cover it with foil and it'll cook really good straight through kind of need that little bit of steam anyway so 
All right. So now we're going to put this on a cookie sheet and get it going. All right, just so we can see, our salmon burgers are ready to go into the oven. I'm going to cover these with foil paper and put them in the oven only because I prefer the more steam to do mine. And you can leave them uncovered, but I, I found that they tend to get a little drier when you leave them uncovered. They're a lot moister if you cover them up with foil. And then our lamb burgers are ready to go as well. We're going to stick both of those in the oven, 350 degrees. Salmon burgers take about 12 minutes. Lamb burgers take about 15 to 20. And we're going to get those in the oven now. Now, while our burgers are in the oven, we're going to do two separate things and they're going to be ready to go before they even come out of the oven let you know how quick this goes. We're going to take a pot. <sighs> Sorry for that delay. I should have had it ready. <laughs> but we're going to take a pot and we're going to make us some hibiscus tea. We have these dried hibiscus leaves that I pick up at Farmer's Market Grocery Store. You can also find them in the Oriental Grocery Store. You can find them in Whole Foods. Uh, you can find them in Sprouts. And you can find them in Trader Joe's. I've just found that they're a lot cheaper at this little Farmer's Market Grocery Store that I go to, which is kind of a slash Oriental market as well. And um, they're a little cheaper in places like that. And so I got this whole thing here for like $3.50. So you're going to just take a couple of handfuls of the hibiscus leaves. Hibiscus is really good for anti-inflammatory disease, anything inflammatory, rheumatoid, or, well, arthritis, fibromyalgia. It helps with all of those. It also helps to lower your blood pressure. It also helps with those that have diabetes. And because it is a sweet flour, you don't need a lot of sugar in your tea and it tastes really really good and if you try it I promise you're not gonna regret it so we're gonna fill this pot with water put it on the stove and boil it once it begins to boil we're gonna cut it off and let it steep in its own leaves and get that going okay so we've put the hibiscus leaves on the stove and they're getting ready to boil now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our onion rings get started on our onion rings so a couple of things that need to happen here is we need to cut the onion up first. So you're gonna need a pretty good knife. Now, of course, you have all of these different ways of uh, doing it. But me, myself, I cut off the end of the onion. You can use any type of onion you like. The onion rings are really good with the purple onion as well and the white. So. You cut off the end of the onion, you peel back that top layer that you always peel. Okay, take that off. Now, you're going to take your knife and just cut straight down. Alright, so when you cut straight down, you just get a circle here. Alright, so then you take the knife and you just cut straight down. Again, straight down and separate them. And when you separate them out, they make these beautiful rings that we're going to fry up. You can always cook these in the oven as well, but I tend to like to go ahead and fry them because they go a little faster. And you don't have to fry them in bad grease and you don't have to fry them in, uh, you know, deep fry them. You could just fry them in a little, in a little bit of uh, grapeseed oil or something like that. And it works out. So we're going to fry So as you can see, we've already gotten our rings ready, our rings ready for our onion rings. And then I've done my batter. All you do is about a cup and a half or so of flour. I use a little, some bean flour instead of regular flour. You're going to use water, of course, to make it pasty. But you're looking for this consistency. Make sure that you're not putting all the water in there at once because you want to keep adding until you get what you're looking for. And then you're going to just season your flour first. So you, we got salt, pepper, garlic powder. Uh, some oregano and I used a little for just good measure uh, chili, chili lime seasoning blend okay so as you can also see is we have some breadcrumbs here in a plate I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those in just a minute so we're gonna head over to the oven and get ready to make our onion rings okay so we've already got our oil in the pan and as you can see it's not covering all the way up to the top so we're not deep frying these okay so what, we're good, what you're going to do is you're going to drop your rings into the batter 
You can actually use a fork if you like. I like to use tongues to get it out. You just want to mix them around and use tongues to get it out. Okay, drop your rings in the batter. Then, and I have it on medium right now. Uh, you can put it on medium high. I am using, um, excuse me, I'm using a little bit of avocado oil and grapeseed oil together because they have high heat capability. So you're going to drop it in the batter. Then you're going to drop it in the breadcrumbs. That way you get your crispiness that you were looking for. Okay, so drop it in the batter, then drop it in the breadcrumbs. Take your tongues, drop it in the oil. Does not take very long. Gonna be needing to turn that over in just a minute. You're not even looking at a whole minute on each side, I don't think. And then we're gonna turn it over. There we go. See that? And you can actually put quite a few of these in the bowl. If you have a bigger bowl, I'm just using a small bowl today, but if you have a bigger bowl, you can actually put most of them in one bowl and mix them around into in the batter. Okay, drop it in the batter and then drop it in the pan. And you see the nice crispiness there? That's what you're looking for. Okay, so we're going to put that on a plate with some paper towels so that the excess oil drips off. We're going to continue, sorry, doing this. Make sure that when you're putting your onion rings in there, you're only putting two and three onion rings in at a time. You don't want to put a whole lot because then it'll start turning into steam and then they'll get soggy. Okay, and that's not what we want. All right, so we're finishing up these nice golden onion rings. It looks really good. I wish y'all could smell my kitchen. It smells good in here right now. And this is what you're looking for. We got some nice homemade onion rings to go with our burgers. They're already done. The burgers will be done here in a few minutes. We got our onion rings going, the last of them here, and we already have our tea. So, now this is how quick and easy this meal is, guys, is that I have actually taken, while the uh, burgers were in the oven cooking, I have sauteed onions to go on top of the burgers. I've made some tea here, which I'm finishing up now. This is our hibiscus that's already been boiled and steeped, and I'm just gonna pour it into this pitcher. I have a one gallon pitcher. And at the bottom of the pitcher, I've already put a cup and a half of sugar. And I've used coconut sugar instead of um, regular sugar because coconut sugar is a lot better for you. So I've used coconut sugar instead of regular sugar. And the reason I'm straining it is because the leaves are still, of course, in there. Let me see if I can get that in the shot. These are the leaves, the hibiscus leaves. And I don't like mine floating around, so I strain the liquid through it. Okay? Putting a cup and a half of sugar in there, coconut sugar, and then this one gallon pitcher. Then I'm going to fill this pitcher. Now I'm, I'm stirring it now because if the uh, liquid is warm, the sugar melts a lot faster. So I'm stirring it now. I'm going to put more water in this pitcher and I'm going to fill it up to about right below the gallon line. And then I'm going to put in a squeeze of lemon juice and then it'll be ready to go. You just put it on ice, it's good and ready. Okay, so now while our burgers were cooking, we got quite a bit done. It only took about 15 minutes or so for them to cook. We were able to saute a few onions uh, so that we can have that to put on top because my husband loves sauteed onions. You can dress yours however you love, want to. Uh, we were able to saute a few onions. We were able to make us a big pitcher of hibiscus tea and we were able to make us some onion rings all while that was happening. So now I have just taken the burgers out of the oven and left them on the stove to settle for about five minutes. Now we're going to put the burgers together and plate them up and then we're ready for dinner. Okay, so these are the lamb burgers that are already wet, ready. I t also had time to, believe it or not, toast some buns. And what we're using is onion rolls instead of regular hamburger buns because we always like to do a little something different. So what I'm going to do is dress this with a little, um, this is actually a little bit of truffle aioli sauce. Um, and it's very tasty, especially for things like lamb burgers and stuff, stuff that are really decadent. You want things that's going to give it a fuller flavor, something that's light but not going to drown it. Um, me, myself, I would still use mustard and ketchup and relish because I'm special like that. But let me see, this aioli sauce has 
12 calories per serving which is one tablespoon and as you can see I just used just a little bit so it wasn't even a tablespoon so and on my salmon burger I'm going to use some dill sauce that I make myself and I'll teach you how to do that one day but first we're going to take one of these nice burgers and as you can tell here you see the cheese has already started to come out of it it's beautiful and it's going to be beautiful to eat and then we're going to top that because of course these are lamb burgers you already have your to your uh, bell peppers and everything already mixed in so you don't want to overdress it so and he loves sauteed onions caramelized onions so we're going to dress that with caramelized onions and that's his and that is ready to go i'm going to set it to the side over here because i'm going to make mine well i'm making another one of these right quick because of course my daughter came over <laughs> and she's hungry so mom has to feed her so we're gonna put okay that so on, on mine we're putting a little dill sauce which i love that i make myself and it is a very healthy i make it with yogurt so makes it better i'm gonna put my salmon patty doesn't that look gorgeous those salmon patties came out so great so i'm gonna put my salmon patty on and i'm gonna put a few banana peppers on top of mine oh my gosh she's doing crazy stuff <laughs> yes i am so I'm going to put a few banana peppers on top of mine. Yes. And just a little bit of the sautéed onions because I like them but not that much. So just one or two does it for me. And then I'm going to dress this with, of course, my absolute favorite. My absolute favorite seasoning in the whole wide world and that is the everything but the bagel se seasoning sesame seasoning that you get at Trader Joe's I love this stuff so when we make our Trader Joe's runs guys I because we live in Memphis and there is no Trader Joe's in Memphis we have to go about once a month and make a run to Nashville to go to Trader Joe's so when we go the lady at the checkout lost my bread <laughs> almost lost my bread so the lady at the checkout counter thinks I am just lunatic because I have like six bottles of this in my basket so there's my burger and there is his burger and we're gonna put them on a plate and make them all pretty and then we'll be done All right, my darlings, so there you have it. We have made us a lovely, lovely Sunday dinner. It's not your typical Sunday dinner, but it's good food. We made us a couple of burgers. We got a salmon burger and a lamb burger, which is something out of the ordinary, but that's okay. And as you can see, I only have one plate because as soon as I finished making it and took the picture, my husband came and ran off with his. <laughs> so, so uh, we, we we made these okay, burgers. Okay, it's official. This is the best hamburger I ever had. Oh my God, really? While I'm taping, y'all see what I'm putting up with? <laughs> While I'm taping, you know I'm on tape, right? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Everybody, this is the best hamburger and onion rings ever. <laughs> so my husband, back in the peanut gallery, says that this is the best hamburger and onion rings he's ever had. So anyway, see, we're transparent. We're just folks. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for coming by. If you really enjoyed what you saw, just take a minute and hit the like button and the subscribe button. I think the like is on this side and the subscribe is on this side. And keep coming back and enjoying this kitchen experience with us. Remember, Mama Kim has always got your back when it comes to food and comes to cooking. And don't be afraid to take a few chances in the kitchen. Do some experimenting. Make some things that you normally wouldn't make. It's okay to try some new stuff. We're on this journey together. We're going to eat good, eat healthy, and enjoy our food. So I'm going to go ahead and dig in mine. We have a few new videos coming up over the next couple of weeks. And we thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm brand new, guys. So I really do appreciate you for watching. Thank you for coming by. Have a blessed evening and happy cooking. I'm going to eat mine now because I was a little hungry. I cook for everybody else, including the dog, and I'm, I'm hungry. So you guys have a good one.
I was good. Girl, you did that. <laughs>